Hey coaches, this is coach Anthony Williams, founder and CEO of Connected Athletics. We are a startup company based in Austin, Texas. We're focused on using technology and a social media platform to allow student athletes to advocate for themselves uh, as they go through the recruiting process, but also to help them successfully transition from high school to college and then into a career uh, once their football eligibility or their football career is over. Uh, we have developed this, uh, this, this spotlight podcast, which gives players a chance to advocate for themselves during the recruiting process during this COVID-19 recruiting cycle and the NCAA dead period. Uh, we're excited to have another prospect with us on the call and we'll get to him in one second. But first, I wanna shout out my sponsors. Uh, we have a few sponsors who uh, believe in what we're doing and trying to help student athletes. And those sponsors are Go Edit Graphics, uh, good friends of mine up in the Nebraska area that do a great job of allowing uh, football programs or any athletic program uh, to create some really uh, sizzling uh, swag graphics uh, for their for their players or for their teams. Buffalo Wild Wings is another one of our sponsors. They're doing a great job sponsoring high school football here in the state of Texas. And then lastly, uh, EPIC, which stands for Every Play I Compete. They are a new sports apparel company based out of Houston. Good friend of mine, Stefan Johnson, is the CEO, and they got they got a lot of hot gear. They've got you know really uh, design and creative uh, face masks, gloves, hand warmers. They do uniforms. They do a little bit of everything. Seven on seven uniforms. So if you're interested in, in Epic, uh, go to their Twitter page. I am Epic two four seven and look and look more into their their gear. But as I said, we're more excited about. This prospect, uh, you guys know how excited I get about linebackers as a former inside linebacker and outside linebacker myself. I love when we have him on the show. So we've got Caden Maxey. He is a class of 21 linebacker from one of the strongest programs here in the state of Texas at Lufkin High School out of Lufkin, Texas. He's six foot, 210 pounds, really strong GPA of 3.7 and a really dazzling highlight video. Coach, if you haven't seen it yet, you got to go watch his huddle video. This kid comes downhill. He's physical. He's a great tackler. He's got a hot motor that runs hot all the time. He can run. But with all that being said, Caden, how you doing this, this, this evening? I'm doing good, Coach. What about you? Man, I am, I'm blessed uh, to be spending time with you and telling your journey. And as soon as we're done, I'm getting ready to eat tomorrow. I'm going to throw down. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> yes. Sir. All right. Well, Caden, thank you for coming on, man. Let's, let's just jump right in here. You know, the first thing college coaches want to know about any prospect is their academics. You've got the strong uh, 3.7 GPA. Tell us a little bit about the importance that you put on your academics. Uh, I was taught from like a young age to like, I always been a ball player, but like your academics come first, you know, like from my mom and my grandparents. And so I always tried to challenge myself with the dual credit classes, with the AP classes, you know, those type of classes to get my GPA up. And uh, the first two years of high school, like I, I wouldn't say I didn't try, but like, you know, like I, it didn't occur to me how important it was. And so I got, I got on that quick and I got it up and uh, I have a 91 GPA right now, or that, that's a 3.7. So I'm real glad about that. And I just try to keep it up, you know, try to give my all out in the classroom as if I would in on that field. Okay. Caden, slide over to your left a couple inches. Let's let the coach see your entire face here. You're cutting off from the screen a little bit. A little bit more. Right there. Perfect. Okay. So you mentioned a couple of things I love talking about. You know, a lot of student athletes uh, kind of take their freshman year off, don't take it that serious. And then when they become a junior or a senior and they're highly recruited, they're wishing they'd taken their academics a little bit more serious. Uh, I love that you kind of, you were honest. Hey, first couple of years, I kind of messed around to take it serious. But then I flipped the switch and uh, you really focus on getting your academics up, which is so going to be helpful for you because the first things coaches look at is your GPA and then your test scores. Have you had a chance to take the SAT or the ACT yet or do you have it scheduled? I took the SAT three times. Well, no, no, sir. I took it twice and I haven't had a chance to take the ACT yet. I plan to take it at least by before spring, before spring for sure. Okay, good. That's good. Coach, I want to hear about that. Tell us with a strong GPA, what are some of your favorite subjects? What do you like uh, studying in, class, in, in school? I'm a history guy and I'm a science guy for sure. Uh, I don't really like math, but I know I need it. So I take it serious. But U.S. history is it's fun to me. I just like doing it. I like learning about stuff that happened back then. Good. I like that. You know, as student athletes, we always have a, a teacher or a coach or a tutor that really helped us stay on our academics. 
Is there a teacher you want to shout out uh, from either elementary, middle school, or high school who's really made an impact on your education? It's two, but one of them is Miss Summers. Miss Summers, she was since my freshman, she's always been there, whatever I needed as far as academically to be successful. And then Coach Lamb too, like he always pushed me to be like, pushed me on the field and off the field because he's a U.S. history teacher. And he always just like, he he helps us get where we are. Like, and when I say us, I mean the football team. So I'm yeah. real grateful for them. Uh, I love that you shouted them out. I appreciate that. Uh, you know, you're in your senior year now, uh, Caden, have you uh, put some thought into what you might major in when you get to college next year? Yes, sir. Uh, I've, I've had to start for a long, like since freshman year, probably middle school. I always wanted to be, do something in the uh, criminal justice field. So I want to major in criminal justice. Like it. OK. Do you see a year, a career in law enforcement, FBI, CIA? I mean, what, what are you thinking? The goal is to get to that CIA for sure. OK. All right. Probably. I like it, man. I like that. I got a couple of friends that work in the FBI. Uh, I think uh, afterwards I'll put you in contact and just kind of have somebody who's a mentor uh, who's in that in law enforcement at the federal level that can maybe uh, kind of guide you and mentor you. So well, I'll take care of that afterwards. Uh, another thing that coaches are, are really into is understanding how student athletes learn, what their learning style is, both in the classroom and on the field. Tell us, in your own opinion, do you think you're more of a verbal, visual, or hands-on learning style? I'm definitely a hands-on like I was I can learn from the other two but I like I could absorb the more, most information by seeing somebody do it or me doing it I like it okay and does that does that learning style change uh from classroom to maybe on the field or maybe in some of your your position meetings or is it the same no matter what I would say that it changes slightly when I'm on the field because you know like in high school you got to learn to take mental reps as well as those physical reps. So you have to be able to absorb information from both. So I would say it's about half and half and high, uh, on the field, but okay. I definitely prefer them physical reps. Yep, I like it, okay. You know, uh, we always talk about a player's body language on the field, but you know, pretty soon we're gonna be through this COVID and, and college coaches are gonna get, gonna get back on high school campus to look at their recruits. What kind of student is a coach going to see if they were to walk by your classroom if you guys are in, in on campus what kind of what kind of student is he going to see uh, of you how you act and handle yourself in the classroom you're going to see I'm not a real like on the field I'm different so you're in class you're going to I sit in the front row almost every class I don't talk I do my work I do what I need to do if I need help I ask the teacher that's just the type of guy I am I don't I don't do none of that nonsense I okay. get, get in the classroom for sure I like it. It's a great response. That's what coaches want to hear. Uh, let's switch over to learning more about you uh, in the in uh, you know, personally with your family. Uh, tell us a little bit about your mom and dad. Uh, are you an only child? Uh, you're, do you have other siblings that play sports? Give us a little bit of background about the Maxi family. All right. So I live with my grandparents. Uh, okay. I, it's funny because I have an aunt. That she basically like my sister, but she's in middle school. Believe it or not. Okay. And I, uh, I have a like my real sister. She lives in a she lives in the Klein ISD district. She, uh, she's an athlete, but she's in elementary. She can run. And then I have, mm -hmm. uh, on my dad's side, I have, uh, I have two sisters and one brother. Well, two brothers, really. And uh, my brother, he's a sophomore. He starts on uh, John Tyler's varsity basketball team. So he's okay. always been an athlete. Okay. Well, and you've got good height and size ready. You're six foot, 210 pounds. Uh, what other, well, let me ask you this, what, what height and weight do you think you'll be by the time you hit a college campus next year? I'm just praying that I get 6'1 by then. It would, okay. I mean, I'm going to play like this forever, but right. I, I just hope that I get 6'1. But okay. uh, I, honestly, I think my dad was, he's 6'2. So I, I, I'm thinking I'd be there by the time I step on a college campus. Okay, good stuff. I'd like to hear that. Uh, tell me a little bit about, you know, we know how much time you put into football in the off season, getting ready for the season and now in season, but when you do have some free time, homework's done, no practice, no workouts, what do you like to do in your spare time? Uh, I like to chill with my friends. Like I'm a, I'm a game guy. Uh, like early after practice, my friend came over and we played, uh, Battlefront two for like a couple hours and we, I enjoy that. I enjoy spending time with my family. Uh, I ride horses a little bit. Okay. Uh, I do a little bit of everything. All right. You mentioned gaming. A lot of kids your age are obviously into gaming. Uh, I have to ask the question, are you giving L's or are you taking L's? 
I'm giving it. Nobody okay. can mess with me, Madden. I guarantee you that. Okay. All right. All right. All right. I like it. I like the confidence. Uh, tell me a little bit about, you know, you know that recruiting is taking place in social media right now. Uh, for the coaches that haven't seen your Twitter uh, page, tell them right now what they're going to see and what kind of message are, and how are you promoting yourself as a prospect? Hello? Are you still there, Caden? Caden, you still there? So, Caden, you, you obviously aware that a lot of recruiting now takes place on social media, Twitter, and Instagram. For any coaches that haven't visited your Twitter page, tell them what they can see. Tell them what, how do you put yourself out there as a prospect on your Twitter page? Uh, on my Twitter page, my, uh, I don't make it too hard to miss me. Like, my huddle, that's a, that's a link to my profile. Every time I get a clip or I get a midseason highlight or a season highlight, it's up, it's pinned. And uh, I reach out a lot, too, honestly. So they're going to see a lot of that, too. Okay. A lot of positive things about you, your teammate, your community, your family? Yes, sir, for sure. Okay. Great. Awesome. Hey, tell me, uh, what is your favorite all-time football movie? Oh, that's, that's a hard one. Uh, honestly, my favorite all-time football movie would have to be I tell Remember you. the Titans. I know okay. that's a cliche answer, but it's just like it's a classic. Got, it's a classic. You got these two, like it's like you're dead in segregation times, and yep. you got these two races coming together for a common cause. What can't you like about it? Yeah, you know, it's just always stuck to me. Yeah, no, it's 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 an all time favorite and, and one of my all time classics. So great answer. Tell me, what's your favorite kind of food? When you go on a visit at college, what what do you hope they're going to serve you? What's your favorite food? I'm a, uh, and I have kind of a sweet fetish. Okay. I love everything sweet. And so I try to stay away from it, but I, I, it tempts me. But uh, like far as regular food, I like pasta. That's probably a favorite, like any type of pasta, chicken, alfredo, okay. lasagna, spaghetti. That's so my what about dessert? Meat. What about that sweet tooth? What are we Cheesecake. talking about? Cheesecake is my weakness for sure. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with that, man. So I'm sure there'll, there'll be some cheesecake on the menu tomorrow at your house? For sure. All types okay. of pies. Cheesecake. All right. Sure. Okay. Tell me, uh, what are your music tastes? Uh, what, are your, what kind of music do you listen to? And do you have a favorite artist there? Uh, I definitely have a favorite artist. I, I like a couple different genres. Uh, I can go back to y'all time with old school R&B okay. type stuff. But yep. My favorite artist of, like, of the new age is Travis Scott. Yep. I went to a concert of his last year, November 9th, and that's definitely my favorite right now. Yeah, he's a favorite of all four of my kids, too. He's a tremendous, tremendously talented artist. Uh, yeah. Tell me, I call this my dream scenario question, Caden. Uh, let's say you have a great three or four years in college, and you find yourself in New York City at the NFL draft. Who is sitting with you at your table waiting for the commissioner to call your name? I'm Paul. My aunt and my dad. Okay. And my sister. Yes, sir. My sister for sure. Okay. I like it. Um, tell me a little bit about, uh, you know, as student athletes, we love having big crowds when, when it's not COVID-19 coming to watch us and support us on Friday nights and Saturdays. Tell us how, what are you doing to give back to your community there in Lufkin? Are you involved in your church? Are you involved in nonprofit or feeding the hungry? What are you doing to give back? Uh, I go to New Zion Temple of Deliverance, and okay. we do uh, we do a lot of stuff to help the community. For example, uh, when was this Saturday? We uh we gave away like we like like they're basically care packages. So they had a turkey, a chicken, sides to go with that, and then a laundry detergent. And we okay. gave that away to the community. We had like we fed them hot food as well, mm -hmm. and it was just uh like a you know, just helping your community out, giving back. Yeah, no, I like that. I like that a lot. Uh, Got to make sure we give back. Uh, tell me, you know, this is a question I love asking prospects like yourself. When football's over, whenever that is, after college or a 10-year career in the NFL, what do you want your life to look like personally and professionally? Professionally, when I walk away, I want to I be honorable. You know, I want to 
I want to be able to leave a mark, like left a legacy for myself and my family. And uh, I want to be set, like, I want to be able to like invest, you know, use my money well, and just, I want to be able to have benefit from my career in football, however that may be. Okay, I like that, great response. Uh, you know, communication between teammates and coaches is important. In fact, communication is important in life. Tell these coaches, how do you best communicate? Do you, you prefer people to pick up the phone and call you face-to-face -face conversation? Or are you okay with, with texts and DMs and things like that? How should you, how should coaches best communicate with you? I'm okay with all three, but I would prefer calling or just talking face-to-face. -face. Cause sometimes when you text, you can't gauge the expression or right. like you can't, right. You can't do that. So yeah. I prefer face-to-face. I like it. I like it a lot. Hey, let's uh, finish up here. Talk about recruiting right now. Um, tell me, and this is kind of an odd way question, but just what will help me on this one. How would your teammates describe you as a teammate? My teammates would describe, like, we're, we're brothers for real. Like, we grew up in a small town. We all knew each other since I don't know when. And so they would describe me as uh, funny off the field. But when we're on the field, like, we can have fun, but we got a mission, you know? And so I'm that type of guy. Uh, I'm a, they would describe me as a good leader, lead by example type of guy. Doesn't talk that much. And that's how they, they would describe me. Well, I, I would think that they would also describe you as somebody who's uh, who plays with high energy. Cause I watched your video a couple of different times. And I mean, not only are you passionate about the game, but you play full speed every play. It's, it's a, it's a cliche that all those coaches use. Like we want our players to play hard every game. It seems like you do, you just enjoy playing the game. You enjoy being physical, making tackles and making plays. Is that just something that's in football or, or is that how you are in life in general? That's life in general for me. I always been like that. Uh, but like in Lufkin, it's like, I forgot when, but one year it started. We didn't have like a very big defense all around. And so they started the purple swarm and like where everybody was getting to the ball. And that's just how like we are. Like we get to the ball if we don't yeah. do nothing. Else. And I so like that's it. why we, we all trying to get a tackle. So we all running as hard as we can. We all doing our job. Yeah, no, I like it. Now you guys have always had great defense there in Lufkin. Tell me, uh, as a senior linebacker now, uh, what do you consider some of your strengths in that position? And what are some of the things you're working on as you transition to college? Some of my strengths is uh, uh, obviously high motor, uh, high football IQ. Uh, okay. I'm a, like slippery to block, like a lot of times. Like that's what my old line tell me. Like, man, I'm your heart to block. And then uh, – I just set myself up or somebody else to make the tackle. You know, like I play well within our scheme. Okay. But uh, some of the things I could work on for sure would be uh, pass uh, covering, coverage. Mm -hmm. Like we don't have a, a big, a huge pass coverage responsibility in our defense, but I could definitely work on that. And uh, something, one of the things I've been working on is that I've gotten a lot better throughout my high school career is foot speed, yeah. like uh, agility. So I've gotten a lot better at that and I'll continue to work on that. Yeah, no, I, I would also say one of your strengths is just you playing downhill. I mean, you've got so many tackles for loss in your highlight video. And you just, any, any coach that coaches linebackers loves kids that play downhill, and you've seen them. There are players that I call them bunny hop. The ball snap, and they kind of hop in their stance, waiting for, something to ha waiting for something to come to them. You don't do that. You wait, you're going downhill, and I, I love that as a, as a coach linebacker. So I uh, respect you on that. Tell me, do you play a role on special teams uh, on, on the Lufkin team? Yes, sir. Uh, I currently, well, like I had uh, injured my ankle a little bit. So like, at the start of the season, I was on any, every special team, literally. But uh, they uh, dialed it back on me a little bit. So now I'm on kickoff. I start on kickoff return, field goal, and I'm a two on punt. You know, I, I, I'm a big fan. I, 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 when I was playing, I played on kickoff also. Tell us, you know, tell people who don't understand for all these receivers and stuff who aren't. Being on kickoff, you got to be a little bit different. You got to be a little bit uh, like, hey, I'm going to run the field full speed. Somebody else is running me full speed, and I'm going to make a play. Talk to us about your mentality and how it differs a little bit from linebacker when you're going down on a kickoff looking to blow up something. You got to go down there with a sense of – you, you got to be mad when you get there. You know, you, you ain't going down there for nothing. And so that's the mentality you got to have. Like, you got – you trying to hit somebody, whether they have a ball or not, in a – you also gotta like you gotta be a little smart about it because like in certain like 
for our example, for our kickoff, uh, you have to avoid it the right way. And if you don't, mm-hmm. you, you open up a big hole. So you, you got to play hard in that position, but you got to play smart as well. That's how yeah. I put it. I like it. No, that's a great response. Uh, you, Caden, yeah, I usually put uh, high school players into two different buckets. Those that want to flip the switch and play on, on Friday nights, and then the other bucket of those players who love to practice and hone in on the, on the scheme and the game plan and then shine on Friday nights. Which one are you? I'm definitely the one that takes practice very serious. Like, for, uh, for example, like, sometimes the coaches got to tell me to chill out a little bit. You know, I'm one of those <laughs> for mm-hmm. sure. Uh, uh, practice is like, I always heard that practice is how you practice how you play. So right. I don't want to play like bad, obviously. So I'm going to practice hard and I'm going to get better at what I need to. And you have to practice hard because you you learning the new, you got a new game plan practically every week. So you got to yep. practice hard for that. Yep, I like it. Great. No, that's a great response. Uh, tell me, are you a big film guy? Do you, do you study film your opponents each week? How much time do you, sp- do you spend uh, studying film? All right, so this is how it usually works. When they drop film for us Sunday, so as soon as they drop it, I'm looking at it, and then uh, I look at it probably 30 minutes a day, like out my day, just I lay down. Like, that's kind of how I unwind, look at a little film, and then it adds up to uh, where I know a good bit of what they're doing. Yeah. Uh, you know, I talk to a lot of players across the country that say they watch film, but I'm always curious about those that are watching the film as a fan, like watching the play in, in the in action, or they're actually watching the film to get an advantage. Tell us a little bit about your mentality as you're breaking down film and what are you looking for to give yourself an advantage on Friday night? Well, what I'm looking for is I'm looking for tendencies of the line. I'm looking, oh, is he heavy? So I know he's going to pull mm-hmm. or... Yep. It, I know he's going to down block or stuff like that. Or if he does this, then it's a quick or, you know, like just stuff like that. And I'm letting the coaches know, too, like what I see. So, like, they can adjust as well because coaches are always open to that yeah. that type of thing. I like it. Caden, is there a linebacker at the college or pro level that you kind of pattern yourself off of or somebody that you look up to? Who, who's who? What linebacker impresses you? I'm a Seahawks fan. So okay. I, as soon as Bobby got to Seattle, I was like, yeah, he's it. Yeah. Yep. That guy. Yep. And he just he plays hard. Like he, he yes, gets he it out here. He can do it all too. He he's great in the past too. So I just always like the way he played. Okay. Well, you're in your senior year now. You're a good athlete, obviously with good explosives and speed and quickness. What other sports did you play at Left Gun over the last three years? At Lufkin over the last years, the only thing that only sport sport I played besides football was uh powerlifting. Powerlifting okay. it really transformed me. Cause yeah. I started like last year, uh I went to regionals and like just I deadlifted five hundred and five uh twenty five pounds. Wow. <laughs> and uh, it just gets you really explosive and mm-hmm. uh it also teaches you toughness too. Cause yeah. like them workouts aren't they ain't no joke. You got to be yeah. able to push. Them. Oh, I did track two last year. I ran a hundred before COVID okay. shut down. Yeah, no, I can tell you college coaches love athletes that A, compete in track and field and B, powerless. You can check both those boxes, coaches that are watching this, uh, this interview. As we finish up here, Caden, tell us, how do you define leadership and how, are, how have you been leading on your team this year as a senior? Uh, how I've been leading on my team this year was our, uh, Everybody wants to lead by example, and that's cool. Like, you have to lead by example to be a leader, but you also have to be vocal. Like, at first, I wasn't too sure about that vocal part because, like, I wasn't a very vocal guy. But, like, I had to, like, hey, they need they need to hear something. They need to hear that we have their back. So you have to be vocal, and then you have to, uh, you have to let them know that they're here, you're here for them, like, questions and stuff. Because we have a lot of uh, – we have – seven sophomores starting on our defense this year and those guys need help you know like they need mm-hmm. us to go talk to them because if, right. if we don't know how they will so it's just stuff like that okay i like it hey uh last question here uh tell us uh let's talk recruiting a little bit uh you know you're in your senior year who have you heard from who do you want to hear from and, and what's been your recruiting journey in a nutshell my recruiting journey uh it's been kind of crazy because like uh like I got my first offer from Louisiana College uh that was in 
May. That was like dead in COVID times. And then uh, uh, Harden and Simmons came around. They offered, I came, I went on a visit about a month ago to them and I really liked their campus. And uh, mm -hmm. I've heard from Texas A&M, Kingsville, and uh, Angelo University in San mm -hmm. Angelo. And uh, I'm on, uh, what's their name? I forgot their name. Where are they at? Uh, Utah, I think. They're in the uh, Mountain West. Utah State? Who, the Aggies or the Cowboys? Else? They're the Cowboys. Okay. I'm on their uh, their recruiting list, and so I'm just waiting to see where it takes me. Just okay. keep working hard. It doesn't really matter too much where I go. Like, I don't okay, have I that deep bus mentality. I just want to go where I, I know I'll be effective and I'll get my education. I like it. Great, great uh, attitude. Hey, let's finish up here. We just finished up about recruiting. Uh, for those these coaches that don't know you, uh, but are going to be interested, look at the camera right now, Caden, and tell them why they should recruit you and what you're going to bring to their program, both athletically and academically. Coaches, you should, uh, you should recruit me because – what I'm gonna bring, I'm gonna bring juice. I'm gonna bring. We had what well, we we say here all in all the time. I'm gonna bring that energy. I'm gonna bring whatever I have all the time. Uh, I come downhill. I'm a sure tackler, pretty much. I'm a great tackler, and uh, I we just gonna get it done. Like we're gonna get it done wherever we are. Weight room, classroom, field, film room. We're just gonna get it done. Great. That's a great elevator pitch. Caden, I'm excited for you, man. I love your high, I love your highlight video. I love your journey, your story. You uh, articulate for yourself very well. Uh, I'm going to be surprised not to hear that coaches are going to be all over you once they see your uh, your senior hu uh, huddle video and they see this interview. Very, very impressive, man. Kudos to you. Hey, tell the family I said hello. If you need anything, or you have any questions going forward, uh, don't hesitate to reach out to me. Please have a happy and safe Thanksgiving tomorrow, and uh, I'll be talking to you soon. I'll be following up with you probably uh, after the new year, okay? All right, Coach. Thanks for the opportunity. Right. Yeah, no, All thank right. you. Have a good night. You too.